and welcome back, my fellow fiends, to the Let's Play Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Last time, we made it to the Amala Temple, and I took care of some stuff off-screen to get us prepared for the coming trials that we have to deal with. Now, the most notable thing I did, of course, is fuse Red Rider. Uh, this is the last fiend I have any serious plans to actually bother fusing. Uh... Re uh, rather, Black Rider and Pale Rider are actually pretty bad, and I don't really think it's worth it to create them. Mother Harlot's pretty good, I just don't know if I'm. it's going to be really necessary to fuse her, uh, given the other demon I have planned picking up is pretty similar. But she is definitely a good uh, physical-type demon, uh, particularly because she repels fizz and otherwise just has good resistances. Uh, I know she has a good elect resistance. Uh, Red Rider's no slouch himself, though. He knows elect and force, uh, and, you know, has the standard resistances that fiends typically do. Uh, the fusion I used to create him was uh, Mizuchi, and I recruited a Dominion from the central area of the Amala Temple. Uh, I'm going to pull a Dominion out of the Compendium after a point, uh, once I hit level 64 specifically, so I can do an elemental fusion to rank it up. You also probably noticed that he has Elect Boost and Force Boost, and although he does not start with a Electric-type spell, he does learn one on his very first level up. I got that by uh, leveling up Nigimitama until he learned all the boosts, and then I registered that and fused him on to Red Rider. I also used some of my money to just buy a couple more Nigimitamas to get onto uh, White Rider and Red Rider, so they'd just be a little bit more powerful. And that's uh, really all there is to say there. Otherwise, I have uh, got myself set up to get the rest of the skills that I need off of uh, Gehenna, the Magatama, so that uh, I can finish that off. Uh, Fire Drain is not a skill that I care about getting, but the skill after it is one that I really want. Let me see, what are some other points of interest I want to bring up? Let's see, uh, Karama's kind of on his way out. He'll still be getting experience, and the, there'll probably be a couple of times in the near future where I'll be pulling him out, but he's kind of past his prime. He's starting to fall behind the level curve a little bit, but he had a very good run. Uh, let's see, Onkot, uh, of course, evolved into Hanuman. Uh, he's got to level up three more times, and then he'll evolve again into the demon I want. Uh, but he is actually going to have his use coming up in uh, a fight in the very near future. Uh, Tetrakarn is actually going to be very useful there. As you can see, he also learns Endure. Uh, nothing else. I recall offhand that I really care about from this particular demon. It's uh, mostly the one that comes after that uh, I'm really interested in. That's all there really is to say there. I kind of wished I could have showed off him evolving, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, other than that, let's see, uh, I got a couple levels with Satan to advance it. Uh, I didn't even pay attention to what this guy was asking. I uh, got a couple levels to the Satan Magatama. So that is uh, closer to getting the skill that is worth having off of it. Let me see here. Uh, I better use a Sukukaja just to make sure I don't miss. Other than that, uh, White Rider, when he leveled up, he got Mana Aid. So now he has Mana Aid and Mana Refill. So he's got some pretty good uh, MP sustain going forward. Let's show off... Uh, Red Rider's unique skill, Terror Blade. It's a random enemy skill, has a chance of inflicting panic. Unlike almost every physical skill in the game, as you can see, it uses MP instead of HP, which is actually pretty nice. It's a very cheap one, too. Unfortunately, Red Rider does not have uh, any kind of MP sustain, so he can potentially run out, but uh, it's not a huge deal. In the situations where he's out, I can just bring in Hellbiker and, uh, you know, just Makatora refill both uh, Red Rider and the Demi Fiend. So, starting this out, we're going to do the Black Temple. Let me just uh, get a look at my notes here, see where I want to start. Okay. So, our first treasure is to the northeast here. Inside the Black Temple, we can run into stuff like legions, uh, you got, uh, of course, Pazuzu over there. Ooh boy, Hellgaze. I'm not going to be overly concerned with the Magatamas I have uh, equipped at this point in the game. Uh, it's not as critical now that I have Endure, but I should be mindful of uh, stuff like insta-kill magic. Right now, I still have Gehenna equipped. Ow. Well, at least I used up a bunch of my money, so the loss is relatively low. So we'll use Godbow. Mana Aid actually completely refunds the MP for Godbow at this point, so that's uh, pretty handy or effective right there. Very efficient. You also notice that I don't have Daisojo. I really do want Hanuman to get some more experience so that I can get him uh, close to evolved as possible by the end of this dungeon. Let's get a little bit more strength. 
Fire Drain, not a terrible ability, but we're not going to be dealing with anything I really care about. If I wanted Fire Drain in general, I'd just equip Gehenna, so it's kind of redundant. But the next skill, if you were able to see it, is Magma Axis, the ultimate fire skill in the game, and also one that is exclusive to the Demi Fiend. We'll uh, hopefully get to put that to work uh, within this very dungeon. Hey, a bead chain, very lucky. Still no incense. You can get them as gifts, and sometimes I get, like, several in a row. I'm not sure if anything influences what uh, de the demons give you for gifts. I don't, I don't know, like, if your luck stat or the phase of the Kagatsuchi has any impact on it. So, let's see. We got our first small terminal here. Small terminal A. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. We'll just update our save here. We're once again at the bottom. Also, by the end of this uh, dungeon, I did mention this, uh, we are going to be getting another Magatama, and that's going to allow me to more or less finalize the build that I'm going to be using for the rest of the game. I do want to pick up a good physical skill, but other than that, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty close to having the Demi Fiend's build finalized. In fact, uh, not too far from now, it's, a, it's still going to be a few videos, I probably will be dropping Warcry uh, from his skill set because we're not going to need it in the future. Duh. I just locked myself into a dead end. Ah, this guy's annoying. Ose. Uh, he is a Dragon's Eye Demon, uh, and he tends to dump out a ton of physical attacks. He also has a rather annoyingly high chance to go first. He also gives terrible experience and money, so I just hate running into this guy. But he's not terribly threatening. Uh, he's definitely a good reason to have physical resistance equipped. I was thinking of checking uh, Gehenna to uh, see when it was going to get the next skill, but I'm pretty sure Magma Axis is learned at level 61. Kind of the main thing working against having Hanuman in the party is that he really does not have anything to contribute at the moment. We're not dealing with a bunch of physical vulnerable enemies at this point. Not for the most part, and uh, he doesn't really have the good skills he learns from his next evolution. Alright, we've got a mystical chest here, so same uh, business as usual. I will advance the Kagatsuchi. Alright, just while I was walking around, uh, we got a new enemy here, Loki. He is resistant to all types of magic, I believe, uh, but he is not resistant to expel or other instant death type magic, so we can just hit him with God's Bow, and that's probably a good idea, really. I don't know why I didn't use Tornado there. I guess I just wanted to get the most out of God's Bow. So long, Loki, the trickster god. Uh, he has a lot of ice magic, and that's about all there really is to say about him. So long, Pazuzu, and let's just tornado this one out of the way also. Yep, never mind. Alright, I'll, I'll just go back to advancing the Kagatsuchi and meet you when I'm done. Oh, hey, uh, we got another new enemy here, uh, Quetzquadl. Uh, let me see, I think these guys are weak to elect. Yes. They do not have any elect magic, so we're just gonna wanna use what we can. They are resistant to physical magic, and they are otherwise ice-oriented demons, somewhat ironically. So, uh, that's, uh, just what you gotta watch out for these guys, otherwise just... Hit them with the strongest things you have. Yeah, they, they are no real threat. They have to do a decent amount of HP, though. Alright, just gotta advance the Kagatsuchi just a little bit more. Alright, we're at full Kagatsuchi. What is our reward? A luck incense. I know those luck incenses are weirdly common when you get incenses. It's like they were aware of what a terrible stat this is. Though, at this point, I won't say no to it. Again, every uh, little bit of reduction in the chance that the enemies get to go first is something I really appreciate. Now that we've, uh, well, actually, there is a little bit more treasure to get, uh, but let's talk to the spirit here. Yeah, well, whatever uh, floats your boat. <laughs> you, you, you sound like you were uh, made for Isamu. There is one more treasure for us to get on this floor. Man, I've uh, actually been getting first struck pretty frequently here. Let me see, uh, I just want to take stock. How many uh, chakra drops do I got? Oh yeah, I can use those. May as well use those for the time being. They're uh, no good if I don't use them. I'd rather not uh, waste time having to cast Makatora repeatedly. I believe... no, not in here. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. I think it is around this corner. Yes, okay. Inside this cash cube, we get a Megiddo Rock. Alright, so, now that we've gotten all the treasure, we can actually get on with the Black Temple proper. This one's kind of weird. Uh, all the uh, temples are kind of based around uh, puzzles. This one doesn't really have that much of a puzzle, to be honest with you. Uh, it's uh, just kind of... well, uh, well, we'll see, we'll see. 
Now you've probably noticed I've been ignoring these side rooms. That is because most of them do not actually have anything in them. We just want to take these lights up and we come into this room with a black torch. Now if we interact with the black torch and put out the black flame, like a Batman temple, we hear something unlock. And that unlocks uh, all those side doors. Now, only a handful of them actually have anything you can do something with, and I'm just gonna go straight to the one that uh, actually takes us where we uh, need to go. So let me see here. Jump through. Okay, I think it's, uh, yes, this is the west side. Okay, I think it's this one. Yeah, we wanna go into this one and jump through this hole. And this is going to put us on a cracked bit of ground. That's going to crumble under the Demi Fiend's massive weight, apparently. And we are in Black Temple B1. Alright, so this puts us... Oh, yeah, let's uh, definitely get that light back up. Do not want to run into any encounters when the lights are out. Let's get the light up and just get a small treasure here. We get a bead. Nothing too fancy there. I want to move a bit quickly because we do actually have a mystic chest to come up. Uh, here we've got a small terminal, so let's just update our save. But we're already at the end of the Black Temple. This one is very simple. It is far and away the easiest of the temples in the Amala Temple. This is one heck of a temple. It's got several mini temples in it. Yeah, all right. Get our save updated. Now let's uh, get our... Uh, well, actually, you know what? No, we're not in a hurry to get it, I don't think. Uh, let me uh, check out this room here. Yeah, yeah, okay, we can do this first. Let's uh, do the boss of this room. Now, each temple has a boss for us to fight. We want to make sure we're at full health here. And I think I want to uh, put uh, Red Rider back in the stock, and we actually want to bring out uh, Karama for this fight. Let me just see. Do, uh, bu -bu -bu. It would be nice if I had more Tarukaja support outside of Hanuman, but it's not critical. Let's just get on with it. Man, talk about having a big head. Ooh, boy. <laughs> This guy's hungry, but yes, this is Asiel. Now, this is not a terribly difficult boss fight. Uh, Asiel likes to spam Tempest, so we can uh, really negate his offense by just throwing up Tetrakarn repeatedly. Uh, other than physical attacks, he has one somewhat nasty attack that I'm not overly worried about. Let me see here. So, I want to pass. Uh, right now, I just want to focus on getting uh, Tarukaja up as high as possible, so... Let's uh, throw that up. Now, unfortunately, Hanuman is going to have to use Tetrakarn every turn if we want to reflect these tempests. But man, look at that damage! Oh boy. Uh, do I want to... Mm, nah, let's uh, focus on uh, getting our buffs up first. Yeah, White Rider's mostly just going to be passing. I will have to use Chakra Pots on Hanuman to keep his uh, MP up, or at the very least, uh, use uh, Chakra Drops on him. But let's just punch him. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Get this maxed out. And, uh, you know what, uh, well, actually, let's throw up a Sukukaja just to eliminate any odds of missing. I was thinking of having him do a Brutal Slash, but, uh, that didn't seem worth it. Alright, so, let's focus. And at this point, I'm just gonna have, uh, Karama pass. He has done what he needs to do. Uh, we're gonna get the Tetrakarn up. Uh, next turn, I can heal his MP. As long as I get his MP, uh, topped off before it comes back to his turn, he should be fine. We'll do that. Pass, and use a Brutal Slash. Okay, here's where the fight's gonna get a little bit more dicey. Now, what's he gonna do? Okay, once he starts mana draining, that actually means he's about to use his special attack. So let's see if he just spends the rest of the turn doing this. Hey, if he's gonna uselessly drain my MP, I am com completely okay with that. All right, so yeah, we're gonna need to uh, get his MP back up. Uh, this, yeah, we're just gonna use the chakra, pro, chakra pot instead. Now let's see, get the Tetrakarn going. And then we'll just have uh, White Rider and myself launch an attack. Unfortunately, focus is off the table now, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, here we go, Soul Niger. This one is nasty. Lowers your uh, HP to one. Very, very brutal. Let's, uh, mm, don't wanna risk it. Hmm. You know what? We're gonna be reflecting his attacks anyway. Why, why uh, let, let's uh, let's risk it. 
Well, let's uh, have some fun with this. Am I being foolish? Absolutely. Alright, and just attack. And attack. Okay, yeah. As far as I'm aware, uh, besides Soul Niger, he just has physical attack, so we should be safe here. Throw up another Tetracurn here, and just keep up the uh, offense. Alright, I will have to restore his MP again soon. Bit unfortunate that he did actually do the Mana Drain. Okay. So, attack. Attack. Tetracarn. We'll have to restore his MP next turn. This time I'll just use a Chakra Drop, because he's got to be close to dead at this point. Okay, looks like he's going for the Mana Drain. So we've got another Soul Niger upcoming, but I'm not too worried about that. Like I said, it's just an HP to 1 attack, so it cannot actually kill us. That said, I will uh, definitely want to uh, use the Chakra Drop and get the Tetra Karn up, because he will get a singular attack in. wonder if he actually drained enough MP to even use it. Okay, let's use the Chakra Drop here. Okay. That's enough for our purposes. We just need to get the Tetra Karn out, and that's it. Alright, and throw out another punch. This fight's taking a while. I for okay. So it wasn't even necessary to get the Tetra Karn up. I, I always forget how much HP this guy has. Rather ridiculous. But hey, that puts us close to our next level up. Alright, so once we defeat Asiel, the Black Temple comes to life. And it starts redirecting its Magatsuhi to the temple in the center. The temple in the sky. Well, uh, I can see you are a fairly shameless opportunist, Isamu. Now, we could use that light to warp out of here, but I'm not going to do that just yet, because there is a treasure we want to get. Uh, first order of business, though, is uh, give myself some MP back. I think just 100 should be fine. And uh, let's uh, get ourselves healed up here. Definitely would not be wise to run around with 1 HP after winning that fight. Alright, so yeah, let's get our treasure, and then we can get out of here. So let me see. Uh, I just want to make sure... Okay, yes. Just wanted to make sure I was taking the right door here. Not that I had many choices, but you know. Alright, I just gotta advance the Kagatsuchi a little bit, so just do that. I'll just do that real quick. Alright, the Kagatsuchi is at full, so let's get our treasure. Here we get a Soma. Not too bad. Let me see, was that a one-way door? Yeah, that was a one-way door we went out of. So now we do have to actually walk out of here. Now I hit level 61 off-screen, and unfortunately I was incorrect. Our next skill was not uh, learned at level 61. I'm not sure if it's level 62 or 63 we learn at. I can just check the Magatama at this point. Uh, also, I don't, I'm not sure what the deal with this is, but in the Amala Temple you can run into Elementals and uh, Mitamas on occasion. Uh, they're not demons that you can negotiate with, so uh, I'm not really sure what the deal's that. Okay, uh, actually, we don't learn it. Uh, hmm, it's very tempting for me to actually uh, work on Narukami at the moment, uh, just because we're getting very close to uh, the upgraded electrical skill, but I do kind of want to wait until I actually have that. Also, I just figured I'd uh, point out Satan. The next skill we will learn is Charisma. But, uh, and that, uh, improves your success rate with negotiation. But honestly, I'm kind of done with negotiation at this point. I can't really think of any demons that I want to recruit via negotiation, even just for the purpose of fusing, really. Uh, I'm kind of close to the point where I'll have enough disposable income that if I just want to do some fusing, I can just, uh, get elementals and stuff out of compendium and do that instead. Speaking of which, I don't really plan to create any more party additions via fusion. Like I said, I may fuse Mother Harlot, but there aren't any other fiends I really care about at this point in the game. Uh, I will throw up Estoma just to get rid of any chaff encounters may, we may run into. Uh, yeah, I, I may get uh, Mother Harlot, uh, and that's uh, just an if or uh, maybe. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of done with fusion. There's going to be some Mitama fusion. Uh, I've got to fuse uh, Dominion with an elemental to get his uh, the demon that he upgrades into. And then I'll definitely... Uh, I already mentioned Mitama fusion tonight. Well, I'll be do doing Mitama fusion, but yeah, otherwise I'm just kind of done with fusion too. Uh, remaining demons are either going to be special recruits that uh, join uh, due to cutscenes, 
Or, uh, just, uh, stuff that's going to be gotten through evolution. Yeah, a lot of the best demons you get surprisingly early in this game, or at least the demons that, uh, help you win the game really easily. Okay, so we're in the Red Temple now, and let me just, uh, look at my notes, uh, let's see. Yeah, I want to go to the Southwest Room. Now, this is a temple with a bit of a weird gimmick to it, and we'll probably see it soon. Huh, got a strange bit of light here. It also looks like there's some one-way doors around here. Now, well, I just kind of wrapped this around here. Okay. Uh, did I... Are my notes right? Huh. Maybe I, uh... Oh, jeez, uh... I, I know there's a treasure around here somewhere, and I'm not sure where it is. Let me... <laughs> I, I, I'm feeling so dumb here. Let me just check one more time. Make sure I wasn't, like, missing something obvious. That is so strange. It must be uh, in the southeast corner then. My notes say the southwest corner, but I must have just not been paying attention when I wrote that. Okay, well, let's head this way instead. Yeah, let's see, nothing around here. A bunch of very cubicle rooms. Hmm. Yeah, okay, nothing to do here. So, let's uh, head straight into the temple proper. The enemies in here are surprisingly weak. I'm not running into any of them. Uh, it's driving me nuts that I don't know where the treasure is. Is it over here? It's not a big deal. It just, it just makes me mad. Wait, okay, yeah, yes, okay, okay. This has got to be it. All right. So my notes were correct. I just kind of uh, didn't... <laughs> it just wasn't obvious uh, how far southwest I had to go. All right, so let's see if I can actually remember the correct way through this. The Red Temple has a gimmick where if you walk through the wrong location, something rather interesting happens. Okay, so we'll go this way. Oh, hey, a new demon here, uh, Dakini. Uh, she is weak to ice and is uh, fire resistant. That's all there really is to say about her. Kind of annoying that she's with Yatsinis, though, because they are force resistant. Uh, honestly, it's probably better to just have the Demi Fiend pass here. And I guess we'll just attack them. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, God's Bow uh, Dakini out of the way, just so I can start using fire magic freely. Unfortunately, Red Rider does not have Bolt Storm yet, so he cannot do anything here. I mean, I guess I could use a Terror Blade, but I'd rather not get hit by Retaliate, so I'm gonna pass on that. And let there be light. A physical attack probably would have killed there, but I know for sure God's Bow will, and I'll get the MP back for using it, so why not? Alright, so let's head this way. Let's see. Okay. Uh... I don't think I want to go that way. I'm pretty sure I want to go this way. And, okay, let's see if I can remember which door I have to take here. I think it's this one? Actually, yes, I th I'm pretty sure I got that right. Okay, okay, we can get out of here, so let's just go on to the next floor. Now, don't worry, we will see the gimmick for this uh, temple on this floor. I'm not uh, just skipping it entirely. First order of business, though, let's head through this door. Because there is a small terminal awaiting us here. Always a good idea to update our save when we're going through a new location. Now, the Red Temple is a little bit more involved than the Black Temple is, uh, and then the White Temple is far and away the most involved of them all. They, they kind of get increasingly complex as you go through them. So, let's actually uh, move a little bit and see what the gimmick for this one is. So, I think if we go through this door right here... No? Okay. Okay, okay, here we go. So, when you walk over a wrong section of the map, these hands will come up and turn the red temple, well, red. And at this point, a lot of the rooms uh, will pick up damage tiles on the floor, but the main consequence of that... Oh, hey, treasure right here. The main consequence of that is that... Oh, uh, what was it? You cannot get to the next floor once you are in the red version of the Red Temple. You have to actually uh, get to it uh, by dispelling the red. So let me see here. We want to take this door right here because there will be a light. And once we uh, walk through the light, it will dispel the red. Now, uh, at this point, we can continue forward. We have to go through the correct doors in order to not re-trigger the red aspect of the red temple. So once we go forward a bit, we'll want to move over. If you walk through the right door, you would uh, trigger the red temple again. So you need to walk through the left door, then walk over to the door on the uh, 
Was that the west side? Yeah, that's actually the west side. It always trips me up when, you know, it's like right and left, but then it's east and west. Hey, Ifrit, this is another location where we can encounter him. I'm not really sure why I'm bringing this up. I just felt like it would be awkward to break the commentary there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we, once again, much like the key, we just need to get this guy out of the way before we can actually start uh, unleashing our powerful attacks here. Okay, uh, actually, yeah, let's just have Hanuman uh, whack them. I could tell we did enough damage there. Alright, now here's where I don't remember which door we have to go through. I want to say we go through the middle one? Uh, I think that might have been correct. Uh, yes it was, alright. So once we uh, head up to the next floor... We uh, are already at the boss room. That was uh, surprisingly quick. Uh, I actually remembered pretty well the ways we had to go here. Uh, let me see. Do I want to put Hanuman in here? He's not really good for this fight, honestly. And on the other hand, I can't... Uh, yeah, he... Actually, yeah, he really cannot do anything in this upcoming fight for reasons that will become apparent very quickly. So let's uh, bring in Karama. Not that... Uh, well, actually, yeah, he'll, he'll have a decent amount to do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I just want to make sure everybody's topped off. Actually, no, no, you know what? No, I, I, I'm probably going to need healing, so we're going to bring Daisojo instead. Now, once we step forward... Gotta say, I love your hair. Uh, yeesh. <laughs> yeah, you could have some Gatorade instead. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, this is Scotty. Now, very important to know about Scotty. She drains physical attacks, so do not try to punch her. Uh, she also has a devastating physical attack of her own called Earthquake that can pretty much just outright kill your team. So we absolutely want to make sure her uh, offense is down to nothing if we can manage it. Also want to start uh, getting my stats up a little bit. Now, she does have access to Dekaja and Dekunda, but honestly, I'd much rather she use that than nail us with her uh, special physical attack. Speaking of which, she's getting ready to use that. So let's uh, just war cry her down a bit. At this point, I can probably start going on the offensive here. We're going to uh, nail her with prominence. I don't think she's resistant to any particular type of magic. Let's uh, use... Uh, mm, yeah, let's use Makakaja here. And we'll hit her with Tornado. Maybe I should conserve my MP for Warcry, but on the other hand, I've got plenty of uh, Chakra... Well, I've got a Chakra Pot. Here comes Earthquake. And that attack, look at how much damage that is. That did, even with two Warcrys up. Absolutely insane. So we'll definitely want to... Uh, let me see, heal ourselves up and make sure we have uh, her fully debuffed when we can manage it. Let's uh, get another Makakaja going. And yeah, use another Tornado. I'll have to restore my MP at this point. But yeah, Earthquake, very nasty attack. She pretty much always uses it whenever she uses two uh, Tarukajas like that. And there is the uh, Dekaja and Dekunda. We still have uh, a bit of an advantage here, though, because uh, as long as she isn't, like, throwing up those Tarukajas, that means she's not going to be using uh, Earthquake. So now we're kind of back to square one, but that's okay. We'll just uh, do what we've been doing. And throw out a war cry. Now, depending on what she does here, okay, she's doing the two Tarukajas. So what I want to do is I want to throw out war cry, and then I want to throw out two Rakukajas to keep the damage manageable here. So let's do that. And we'll just have a uh, dice. Yeah, actually, you know what? Let's uh, meditate to get his MP back. And throw up another Rakukaja here, and we should be in good standing. That attack always makes me so nervous when I see it. Okay, I can live with that. Uh, let me see here. Actually, I should Dekaja her so we can get those uh, defense buffs out of the way. And you know what? Since she's just going to dispel my buffs most likely, let's just go on the offensive here this turn. Very nice. She doesn't have as much... Okay, okay, she's going for another, uh... What was this? Oh, man. She's going through another Earthquake. Man, I lose my train of thought so easily. 
All right, we're just gonna go on the offensive here. Fortunately, she does not have nearly as much HP as Asiel does. And she's taken care of. But yeah, this is, this fight can be really nasty if you don't know Earthquake is coming, because it is has an absolutely absurd damage modifier compared to a regular physical attack. Like, if you just have one Warcry in place, that will kill your entire team. I have had that happen, so do not let that be the case. Man, I can't imagine how annoying that fight would be if she used uh, Earthquake twice. Honestly, if that was the case, I probably would have to bring Hanuman back in and just have him spam Tetrakarn just on the chance that she does that. And unfortunately, since she drains physical, uh, the reflected attacks would not damage her. That was a very uncomfortable comment to make, Yasamu. Why would you say that? Anyways, there's no more treasure to get in here, so we can actually warp out of here. This is uh, going surprisingly smoothly. Uh, nearly every time I've played this game, I always completely forget how the Red Temple goes, and I just end up getting horribly lost and, like, blundering in that uh, temple for, like, an hour. So I'm glad that was not the case here. All right, let's uh, get a Stoma back up. Uh, yeah, I do want to get Hanuman back in the party. Let's see, how's he doing on EXP? All right, he's close to his next level. Gonna need two more levels. I might actually have to do a little bit of grinding because we're getting through this a lot more uh, quickly than I was expecting. Uh, we'll, I'll definitely wait until we're actually done with the dungeon to see uh, how necessary that'll be. But the reason is I actually really want uh, Hanuman to not only evolve, but actually get a level because it's very critical that I have the demon he evolves into and have leveled him up at least once for another uh, boss battle that we're going to be getting into. Uh, not to put to, just to uh, quickly explain why that is, uh, the boss battle that I'm thinking of has a gimmick that revolves around uh, a character having the lowest HP in the party, and uh, he'll get a physical skill that has re a really high HP cost, which will allow me to manipulate it so that he is consistently the character with the lowest HP in the battle, and that's very important. But now that we've uh, gotten the Red Temple and the Black Temple cave taken care of, all that's left is the White Temple. So we will remake our save where I left us at the end of the previous video. And yeah, that's uh, that's it for this part. Uh, we're doing this pretty well. Uh, I'm surprised how smoothly this has been going so far. Usually I get tons of headaches from the Yoseis in the Black Temple because even though they give terrible rewards for fighting them, they are just ridiculously annoying. They're, they're like Samuels from uh, Digital Double Saga, now that I think about it. But uh, the, I'll just leave it there. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.